Okay, here's the lesson for section 6.3, graphing using x-intercepts. The objective of this lesson is to be able to solve the quadratic that is in standard form. If we remember standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So we want to be able to um, graph a quadratic if it's in that form. So in order to do that, we're going to have to be able to solve this. Okay, so we're going to have to find the x-intercepts and then use the x-intercepts to find the vertex and then graph it. So once again, the objective be able to solve a quadratic that's in standard form, then use the x-intercepts to find the vertex and then graph it. Okay, so just a review of how we solve quadratics. Solving means to find the x-intercepts or or the roots. All of those terms are all synonyms. Okay. So to solve a quadratic, it must be set equal to zero. Okay, so we have to set it equal to zero first. After we've set it equal to zero, we can factor this. And after we've factored it, we set each factor equal to zero and solve for x. If you wonder why we do that, watch the previous video that I posted for section 6.2, solving quadratics. Okay, so how do we sketch the graph of the parabola? How we sketch the graph is by first finding the x-intercepts. Okay, we do that by solving using this method over here. After we've solved it, we find the axis of symmetry. How we find the axis of symmetry? We know the axis of symmetry. If this is our parabola, here are the x-intercepts. Okay, we know the axis of symmetry is right in the middle of the parabola. Okay. So because the axis of symmetry divides it in half, so to find the axis of symmetry, we just find the midpoint of the two x-intercepts. We know it's going to be right in the middle of those. So to find the midpoint of the x-intercepts, you just add them and divide by two. Okay? And the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex, because the vertex is also in the middle of the parabola. So the axis of symmetry is the x-coordinate of the vertex. So after we've found the axis of symmetry, which is the x-coordinate of the vertex, we use the axis of symmetry to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. Just plug the x-coordinate into your equation and solve for y. After you have the vertex, you can graph it just by plotting and labeling the x-intercepts and the vertex. Okay, after all that, let's just do an example. So, we want to sketch the graph of y equals x squared plus 8x plus 7, um, and then label the x-intercepts and vertex. Before we can do that, we have to solve this quadratic. We have to find out what the x-intercepts are. Okay. To solve a quadratic, we set y to equal 0. Okay. y is 0, and then we're left with x squared plus 8x plus 7. Okay. We know y is equal to 0 because um, every point on an x-axis has a y-coordinate of 0. Okay. So all x-intercepts have a y-coordinate of 0. That's why we set it equal to 0. Now we factor this. This is a quadratic in standard form with an a value of 1. So what we do um, for this one, this is the easy way of factoring. We just find two numbers who have a product of c, so a product of 7, and a sum of b, which is 8. So the two numbers that multiply to give 7 and add to give 8 are 7 and 1. So what we do with those numbers, we plug those numbers into x plus r times x plus s for r and s. Okay, doesn't matter which one goes where, just as long as 7 and 1 go in for r and s. So what we now have is 0 equals x plus 7 times x plus 1. Okay, so I have something times something equals 0. Okay. And to consider both cases, um, I have to set each factor equal to 0. So I have to set x plus 7 equal to 0, and I also have to set x plus 1 equal to 0. Okay. The reason why I do this is because of the zero product rule. Um, if I have two factors and their product is 0, one of those factors or both of them have to equal 0. To consider both cases, okay, you set each of them equal to 0, and then solve. So for this one, x would be equal to negative 7. That would make this factor equal 0. And for this one, if x was negative 1, that would make this factor equal to, to 0. 
Okay, and that would get us our product of zero. So these are in fact our two x-intercepts, negative seven and negative one. Okay, those are our two x-intercepts. So if you want to, once again, if you want to review how to solve the quadratic or you want more explanation for that, watch the video for 6.2. Okay, so now we have our x-intercepts. Our next step is to find the axis of symmetry. Okay, we want to find the axis of symmetry now. So I'm going to use the short form AOS. To find the axis of symmetry, we must find the midpoint of the x-intercept, just like as I was explaining back over here. Okay? Because the axis of symmetry is right in the middle of the parabola, so if we find the midpoint of the x-intercept, that will tell us our axis of symmetry. So our axis of symmetry is x equals um, the sum of our x-intercepts, negative 7 and negative 1, negative 7 plus negative 1 divided by 2. So our axis of symmetry is negative 8 divided by 2, which is negative 4. So x equals negative 4 is our axis of symmetry. We also remember that the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. So that means the x-coordinate of our vertex is negative 4. Okay? Make that a little more clear. Good. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative 4. So if I want to find out the y-coordinate of the vertex, so the y-coordinate, so there's the x-coordinate. Just underline that better. There's the x-coordinate. Now if I want to find the y-coordinate, all I have to do is plug that negative 4 into our equation and, um, and solve for y. So if I remember my equation, it was y equals x squared plus 8x plus 7. So all I do, plug negative 4 in to where I see x and solve for y, and that will tell me the y-coordinate of the vertex. So I'll get y equals negative 4 squared plus 8 times negative 4 plus 7. If I simplify this, that gives me 16 minus 32 plus 7. 16 minus 32 is negative 16, plus 7 is negative 9. So the y-coordinate is negative 9. Therefore, my vertex is negative 4, negative 9. So my x-coordinate is negative 4, y-coordinate is negative 9. Write it as um, in coordinate form. And there you have it, negative 4, negative 9. Okay, so now that we have our vertex right here, we have our x-intercepts, we can graph it. Okay, so just looking back, I'll plot my x-intercepts first. My x-intercepts were negative 1 and negative 7, yep. Yeah. So it crosses the x-axis, negative 1 and 7. 7. And the vertex was at negative 4, 9, 2, 3, 4, and then negative 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7. No, oh, I'm going to have to scroll down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. Then just connect those with a smooth curve. Oh, that wasn't good, but you get the idea. Okay. Actually, let me try again. That's better. Okay, so and then just label your vertex. Negative 4, negative 9, and the x-intercepts are at negative 1, 0, and negative 7, 0. And there you have it. There's the graph of your parabola. Okay, the only thing else I want to teach you in this lesson is what happens if you're solving the quadratic and you only get one, you only get one solution. There's only one x-intercept. So if you're asked to graph this here, y equals negative x squared plus 6x plus 9. You're going to start off the same way. To solve it, just set it equal to 0. Then we're going to solve by factoring. So that's the only method we know so far. So we're going to um, factor out the negative. Okay, so I divide each term by negative 1, and it changes the sign of everything. 
Um, make sure you always remember to do that if there's a negative in front of the x squared when you're starting. Factor out that negative. Okay. Now I know how to factor what's inside here. Okay. You can notice it's a perfect square trinomial okay, and factor it to just um, x plus half of b and that whole binomial will be squared so it will be x minus 3 squared. Or you can do it the sum and product way. Okay. So this is a, um, a quadratic and standard form with an a value of 1. So find two numbers that multiply to give 9 and add to give negative 6. Those two numbers are negative 3 and negative 3. Now to solve this quadratic, you set each factor equal to 0. So set x minus 3 equal to 0. And the other factor is also x minus 3. So you'll see what's going to happen here is we just get the same solution of x equals 3 for both. So that tells us there's only one x-intercept. But how can a parabola look to only have one x-intercept? How it looks is that, so we know there's an x-intercept at 3. Okay. This is the factored form here. The a value is negative, so we know it's going to open down. So what's going to happen? The parabola is going to just touch the x-axis like that right there. Okay, so it just touches the x-axis. It never goes through it, it just touches it at x equals 3. Okay, so that's what it looks like um, roughly um, when there's only one solution. Okay, but if we want an exact representation of this, we also have to figure out points to the left and to the right of this point here. Okay, so we know that this is our vertex. I, for, I think I forgot to mention that. So if it just touches the x-axis there, so it goes up, approaches it, then comes back down, this is going to be your vertex. Okay? It's right in the middle. So if our vertex is at 3, 0, and we want to graph this exactly, we have to find points to the left and to the right. Okay? So at x is 2 and x is 4, we find points to the left and right, then we can graph it exactly. Okay? So my equation is y Oops. My equation is y equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 9. So let's find out what y is equal to if x is 2. So just replace x with 2. And then solve for y. And what we will get, uh, negative 4 plus 12 minus 9. Simplify that. Negative 4 plus 12 is 8. Minus 9 is negative 1. Good. So my y is negative 1. So 1 to the left of the vertex. My y value is negative 1. That means because parabolas are symmetrical and because this x-intercept is our vertex, okay, in this instance, 1 to the right, the y value must also be negative 1. So our parabola is going to look roughly something like this. Okay. And then just label your vertex, 3, 0. So the vertex is the x-intercept when there's only one solution. And label the other two points. Oh, this one is 4, negative 1. And this one is 2, negative 1. Okay, label your points. And then that's all there is to this one. Okay. So just a thing to note, if there's only one x-intercept, so if there's only one solution, the x-intercept is the vertex. Okay? The parabola never actually goes through the x-axis and then comes back down and goes through it again. It actually just goes up and touches the x-axis right at where the, the x, where the solution was. The solution was 3, so it touches it at x equals 3 and then comes back down. Okay, so it never goes through the x-axis but it touches it at x equals 3 because our solution was x equals 3. Okay, so that's all there is to that video. Um, any questions, let me know.